So you know about testing, you know why you should test, and you know what to test, but we didn't address yet how to test. How are we going to express to the user of the spreadsheet that a test is broken? Well, there are two different ways that you can test in a given spreadsheet, as you see here. The first thing you can use is conditional formatting. Maybe you've used this before. Conditional formatting is a feature in Excel where you can change the color or the format of a cell based on specific rules. Here you see how it works. So suppose we want to add conditional formatting on the margin column. We select the entire column and then we select conditional formatting. We get a pop-up screen and in the screen we can select, there we go, we can select, we want to have a rule for values that are below a certain threshold. And then we can say below what threshold should it be and we say if it's below zero we want to have it become red. And then you see it becomes red for all the values below zero. And it immediately works for the entire column because we selected the entire column when we added the rule. So if we add another new item to our catalog and we make a mistake, we immediately get the red value in the cell. Conditional formatting is nice. It works really well because as you can see, the erroneous values, they really hit the eye. They attract your attention because they're really different from the other values. However, this is not my preferred way of testing. First of all, cell colors can have a different meaning. You can use conditional formatting, for instance, as we do here, where the red values do not indicate an error. What they indicate here is the percentage is below 10%. And that just means the item isn't selling very well. Only less than 10% of the profit is coming from this item. So that doesn't mean there's a mistake in my formulas. That means that I should do a good review of my product catalog to make a decision, am I still going to sell this item? So sometimes the colors red don't indicate wrong values, but they indicate problematic values, a product or an account that just isn't selling so well. That's one reason why you don't want to use conditional formatting. And another reason is that if you do it in a different way, as I'm going to show you, you can build formulas on top of the test formulas. So let me show you how I prefer to do it. Not with conditional formatting, so we're going to clear all the conditional formatting rules. And what we're going to do is add a test formula. So in another column we say, is the margin okay? And there we add a formula that expresses what we expect from the values. So we say, hey, if this value is below zero, we say, error, this is too low, and otherwise it's okay. And if we drag the formula down, you see that those erroneous values get a notification, error, too low. And if you do it like this, you can build formulas on top of it. As I said before, you can use this value because it's just another cell value. You can use it as the input for another formula. And this might sound a little bit cryptic, so let me show you what I exactly mean with that. So what we can do here is add an overall test formula where we're going to check, is there an error in the list of our checks? So what we do is we count, we use a count if, and we count the number of OKs in the whole margin column. And from the number of OKs, we subtract the general number, the with a count A, the number of all items in the list. And now we see that this is not zero, it's minus two, which means we don't have the same number of OKs as the total number of values that we have. That means not everything is OK, so there is an error. We can add, and we don't want minus two as a value, we want, again, to make this into a test formula. So we say, if it's minus two, then it's an error. If it's any value below two, then there's an error, and otherwise it's okay. So now we've built a test formula on top of all the test formulas that we already had. And we can repeat this process. We can add a number of columns next to it and say, for all of the columns, add another test formula. And we can repeat this trick at the higher level where those four column tests, again, we're going to combine them into one test where we count the number of OKs and the number of OKs should be equal to the number of items, test cells in our list. 
So now we can have one big test at the end of our worksheet where all the test columns and all the overall tests come together. And then this is a formula again where we want to add conditional formatting because this error, there's no way this can mean anything else. If a cell that says error is red, probably something is up. There's no other meaning that this could have. So for such a funnel test formula, adding conditional formatting is a really good idea.